So for the lymphatic supply of the stomach, I want you to remember one basic rule is that there are these nodes called the celiac nodes. And these are the central lymph nodes where all the lymph of the stomach has eventually got to reach, right? These are the celiac nodes because from the celiac nodes, the lymph goes to the intestinal lymph trunk and the cisterna chili. I hope you remember because then the thoracic duct begins. I hope you remember that concept. And from there on, lymphatics end up in the venous system, right? So celiac nodes are where the eventual lymph of the stomach should end up, all right? Uh, now let's draw some basic lymph nodes along this area. Do you remember there was this artery here, the left gastric artery? So similarly named, the left gastric nodes lie right over here. Makes sense? Uh, over here, what do you think should lie here? Because I know one thing that the spleen lies over here and the pancreas is also, the tail of the pancreas is attached to the spleen right here. So I guess the best name to give the lymph nodes lying right over here should be the pancreaticosplenic lymph nodes. So these lymph nodes are about over here, all right? And going to this area, I remember there was this artery that was coming from here that was uh, giving blood supply to the stomach. It was known as the right gastroepiploic artery. Therefore, I think the nodes over here should be named after that so right gastroepiploic lymph nodes and finally this is the pyloric part if the nodes are lying beneath it basically more specifically it lies between the first and second parts of the duodenum uh, these are known as a sub pyloric lymph nodes all right because they lie just beneath the pylorus of the stomach right these are known as a sub pyloric beneath the pylorus right so these are the nodes and then there are nodes of the liver known as the hepatic nodes so overall, I want you to give this basic draft to the stomach when it comes to the lymphatic drainage. All right, along the lesser curvature, the left gastric, along the greater curvature, upper part, the pancreatic splenic, while on the lower part, the right gastroepiploic, beneath the pylorus, the subpyloric, and hepatic lying close by. So now what we're going to do is talk about how the lymph is going to drain via these lymph nodes. All right, as a general rule, I hope you all remember, all the lymph has to drain into the cilia nodes right so what happens now is that let's divide the stomach into various areas and how will you divide it you'll make half a smile here's the smile just half of it because the dimple on the other side you're not going to complete it all right then make half a tongue coming out from that smile like that right we couldn't complete the tongue i'm sorry that's just the rule all right so what happens here is now you've divided the stomach into a right two-third part and a left one-third part, all right? So this is the right two-thirds and the left one-third. The left one-third is further divided into an upper and a lower part. And finally, this is the pyloric part. Now the work has become easy. All we have to do is name what is happening on each part. So it goes like the lymph from the upper part of the left one-third is draining into the pancreaticosplenic lymph nodes. And from the pancreatic splenic lymph nodes, the lymph will eventually go into what? The celiac lymph node. So we're done. We've drained the upper left thirds of the stomach. Now let's talk about the lower left thirds. So the lower part of the left one third of the stomach is draining into the right gastroepiploic lymph nodes. How does it go to the celiac nodes? Uh, let's make a pathway for the right gastroepiploic lymph nodes to get its lymph to the celiac node. So what happens is the lymph goes from the right gastroepiploic to the subpyloric and from here it goes to what is closest, the hepatic. And from the hepatic it enters the celiac lymph nodes. How is the lymph drained from the right two-thirds? It drains into the left gastric nodes and from the left gastric node it enters the celiac lymph nodes. And finally, what about the pylorus of the stomach? How does it drain? Well, the pyloric part of the stomach has its lymph draining in all directions. That's the landmark and special feature about this part, right? So it goes, where can it go? It goes wherever is close by. So the subpyloric lymph nodes are close by, hepatic nodes are close by, and then the left gastric lymph nodes are close by. And from these pathways, it eventually, you can see that the lymph eventually will end up in the celiac lymph nodes and obviously the thoracic duct. Now we know that the left upper one-third drains into the pancreaticosplenic lymph nodes, the lower left one-third drains into the right gastroepiploic, which goes to the subpyloric, which goes to hepatic and to the celiac nodes, and the right two-third drains into the left gastric nodes, which ends up in the celiac nodes. Pyloric part drains in all directions, eventually ending up in the celiac nodes, 
and from there the lymph enters the cisterna cali into the thoracic duct here is where i'm going to talk about the clinical significance because the lymph from the stomach ends up in the thoracic duct and the thoracic duct lies close to the nodes the left supraclavicular nodes i hope you all remember uh, what happens is whenever there is any cancer in the stomach the metastasis from the cancer can end up in these supraclavicular lymph nodes this is known as the troizer's sign which means whenever you palpate someone's lymph nodes uh, supraclavicular lymph nodes uh, on the left side and if they're enlarged it's actually a very alarming sign and investigations need to be done on the stomach because when these lymph nodes get enlarged it is a danger sign and requires further investigations so that was all about the lymphatic drainage of the stomach